Okay, this is the next uh, old gauge update. Uh, this is my Williams Train Master, and the other day when I was running it, it derailed, I guess, and the uh, bridge rectifier started smoking. <laughs> so um, this unit is so basic that it just has uh, motors and no reverse unit, no E unit or whatever. There's actually a bracket to put in uh, a Lionel one. So I talked to my buddy there, uh, Wisconsin buddy, too many hobbies, Jeremy, he's awesome. And this was the bridge rectifier type that he kind of recommended. I found this one on Amazon, it was a two pack, 12 bucks Canadian. And uh, so if you look, <clears throat> sorry about the shakiness. You see the little squiggly line. Come on, zoom in. There we go. Squiggly line is to the ground, then a positive, another squiggly, and a negative. So I'll get some uh, solder on this bad boy and get her back up to speed. This is one of my favorite locomotives, definitely my favorite Williams. And it's got these big Pittman <clears throat> motors. All the other ones have a Mabuchi can motor, I guess is how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. And uh, okay, now the next thing I wanna talk to you about is the layout. So I have these K-Line turnouts and I paid $10 for them. Some of them I paid $10 and they're powered and some of them they're not with the idea that when I can find more, switch them out. So these are an 027 turnout. They do make a 042 as well. I have a couple of those. And uh, basically I'm trying to understand if I can put the now Menards turnouts here, but I don't think I have enough room. Um, I'm gonna have to see, those are 072. I would love to fit uh, those in. The way that my main line works, or main lines, is this is an 042 loop, the inside. Then these two loops with the trains on them are 054 and the outside loop is 072. And that's kind of, uh, I guess, what I decided based on the equipment that I was going to run. Obviously you always want bigger <laughs> after the fact. So these guys, they do go through, but sometimes the, um, it's not really a fuel tank, it's electric locomotive, but anyway, the fuel tank for lack of a better term, it will hit this. So I've had these covers off and I scanned uh, 3D at the library and there's a piece of metal underneath here. So the idea was gonna be that I would cut that with a cutoff blade on the angle grinder and then 3D print uh, a new skinnier plastic because this right here is where the fuel tank hits. Uh, the Semi-scale GG1s are no problem, but I I doubt it. I can't remember right now, but I bet the FM train master isn't going to fit through there. So it's not paramount that the switches on the main line don't work for every locomotive. And you see, here's the crossover. So I just have a crossover between the outside two and the inside too. And then the other switches, I've got one here to where those cars are, will be an in industry. And then I've got two here, one there, and one over here. And this track here is kind of like a passive, well, it is a passing siding. And then this track is another siding off. I call that my yard my one track yard <clears throat> there's a better view of that so I think since the last video I don't know 
but one night I had the courage and I installed all these. In the middle loop, I haven't put any cork. I don't know if I'm going to. It hasn't really made a difference. The rubber rocks have made more of a difference on the sound than anything. It makes it quite quiet. I like the track plan. I'm just thinking now that this stupid Menards switch has come out, which is already sold out, um, and people are some people are having problems with them already, but I would maybe change these two, but I'm gonna have to take some measurements and it's kind of hard to do. Oh, this one's off. So you can see this here, it's just a metal bracket and this could easily be cut. And if that was the case, then the fuel tank won't hit. So if I do that, honestly, I probably will stay with these switches. Okay, so next thing. Um, I When I built this layout, what I really wanted was for the main lines to be raised and then there to be like a brickwork on the side, kind of like some of the Northeast Corridor is. And what I ended up with is not exactly what I wanted. Um, there's a lot of constraints on what the layout's made out of and all that because this is actually a temporary setup. It could go to a show, it can be stored. I've stored it on my ceiling. I've just leg bolted it to the ceiling. And then I have these end scale carts on wheels and all these modules are two feet wide and they have uh, one by three. And if you look under here, um, they sit on those modules perfectly. So right now this thing is riding on sawhorses because the modules are in the garage, but I can have the option of putting it on sawhorses, putting it on the carts. So that kind of determined what I was doing with the raised track, because uh, I've made this layout to be portable, so I kind of dismissed that idea. Now I have these Ikea legs, and they're called Adil, Adilis, I think. And uh, used to be five bucks with the screw in plate and the leg itself. And the leg is adjustable on the bottom, depending on what your floor situation is. And so what I did kind of, not for fun, but is I blocked underneath here with uh, two by threes. So you can see those plates installed and I left this one here. So these, this two by four scrap and two by three, this is a, one of the legs here. It's not touching the ground because it's shorter than the sawhorses. So these legs, of course I can't get that off there. It's really tight, but anyway, they unscrew and at the very bottom they adjust. So I think they're $10 now, but I have a whole bunch of them left over. That's what this little table is made out of. And if you look at my shorts, short videos, I actually have it where this module, which is this table here, it's two feet by six. So these are all cut now and they're butt joints. And then I got some banana plugs from Amazon. Let me just go back under here so that I can have kind of a quick disconnect between it. Kind of like like a Freemo module, if you've ever seen that. So you just unplug that. And, and that's a jumper cable between the main line. So this is a different module here, and that's a, another module there. And the purpose of going to those legs is basically my thought process is Putting it on the ceiling is not a, it's not a quick endeavor and I need my wife's help, etc. Modules are bolted together, by the way, with a wing nut. So, um, if these were on those legs, I could take out the two wing nuts, unplug all the cables. There will be eight cables when I have all the main lines hooked up right now, there's just two and um, 
and then the tables would be loose and you could move them around the room, around the rumpus room here. And I could push them all to one side and have the room free for other stuff that, uh, you know, we do with my family. So that's kind of the way that I'm thinking I'm going to go. Um, only this table's been converted. I like how it, how it's set up. And then I've only cut here, so I actually will have to cut this with a Olfa knife and drop it down. That's going to be the next thing. And then install the, the uh, Atlas circle plates in the corners. I mean, it really didn't take long to do that. And uh, I just want to show how I build my layout because it's, I don't know, I think it's a little different idea. So if I was to go to those legs, and when I had that down on those legs, I didn't have the stupid sawhorse. <laughs> it gives me more space. It might not sound like a lot, but that's, that's the thing. Like, just makes it more neat and tidy for the basement for my wife. And uh, the next thing I'm thinking about is, is fascia. So what I ideally would like is to cut this, block it off with two by three underneath, and then make a curved fascia, like what I have in the end scale here. Just like that. And then I sprayed um, spray foam in the gap and put foam and basically made it so that a square table can be round. So I just kind of want to give it that shape. I love that round corner. Before I went down the path of these screw-on Atlas legs from Ikea, uh, what I was leaning towards was a winch in the ceiling situation so I could raise the whole layout up still thinking about that um, how I would probably do it have this blocked probably have to leave the corners or if they're rounded it would have to be down here and then have like a carabiner locking carabiner come into uh, an eyelet and then basically um, an eye bolt bolted through the table and then the winch cables come down click that on but why I kind of went away from that idea is this is modular. So if you see, I don't know if I can show it on camera, but basically if this gets picked up here, I'd need a couple different spots for that cable to come down, like four wouldn't do it. So then I got thinking, okay, well, if I do the winch system, I'm gonna need some extra bracing because of the two bolts. It's not that it wouldn't hold, but it would, it would sag and could wreck the layout. So um, that's where I'm thinking, okay, well maybe just unbolt the table with the two wing nuts, unplug all the banana plugs, and then you can just push the table to the side. So these tables are pretty lightweight, made out of one by three, and then quarter inch uh, plywood. And the last thing I guess I wanna talk about, sorry, there's a, been quite a few things that have uh, been going on with this is um, if you remember a little earlier I was telling you about how I want the brick on the side and I wanted this raised what I'm possibly thinking I thought of last night was to instead of do fascia do the brick here you know this might have to get changed a little bit I wouldn't need this uh, kind of derail edge so I could put this grass flat, take out the foam. So put the brick and then have maybe a half inch plywood screwed to underneath the table. Everything would have to be wired and then have another main line here. And then basically like a, a loop underneath these four and then have that um, go under the table. <coughs> Excuse me maybe stick out 12 inches or so, have one or two tracks go around. It doesn't even need to go with the whole layout. It could just go around this section, uh, basically a loop, but uh, off center from the other loop. Could go around the whole way as well. And then cut the plywood 
edge and put the fascia on that because that would be the new edge of the layout. So <laughs> that was the newest, fanciest thing I was thinking about. And uh, of course that would make it so I have more options for running trains, run my camelbacks on the, on the bottom and then the top would all be electrified. Um, you know, I didn't really want to go with four main lines, but that's what a lot of this Northeast Corridor has. And if this was raised up, then you'd have the option of cutting the table and having bridges go over top of the track below. So that's kind of the latest thing I'm thinking with that. So I'll leave it at that. There's a little bit more that's going on. Um, I've got some stuff to pick up at the mailbox. But uh, yeah, some, some changes are gonna be coming soon. Um, it's a work in progress, but she's been running good since I've been working on it. And uh, the fourth, main line the inside main line is all installed now so <coughs> just working on the wiring and we'll get this uh train master back up to snuff all right guys i'll leave it at that